take our Bibles and go to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12 tonight is where we'll start. So Romans chapter 12, we'll read verses 1 through 8. So Romans chapter 12, starting at verse number 1. The Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on or exer- him that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it sim- with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we do thank you again for the evening. I ask that you would bless our time together. Guide us through the scriptures. We pray the Holy Spirit would teach us, bring to our mind things that we need to remember. Father, help us to walk away with fruit that's been gleaned from the Word of God, something we can meditate upon, something that will help us, Lord, through the rest of this week in our spiritual growth, uh, to strengthen our faith. Father, we ask that you obviously would be the center focus, because, Father, without you, we have nothing. So, Father, I ask that you would please speak to our hearts in a great way tonight. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Tonight, I want to talk to us about using our talents for God's glory, using our talents and gifts for God's glory. Obviously, in this chapter, in verses 4 through 8, it lists some of those spiritual gifts that God gives, uh, just the gift of prophecy, being able to, to preach the Word of God, the ministry, being able to minister to people, to be able to teach the Word of God, to be able to exhort. Uh, there are many that are good at exhorting people. Just, I mean, they just when you come around them, whether you are having a bad day, it just seems like they know exactly what to say to help you feel better, to help you get back on the right track. And obviously he talks about giving. Uh, everyone ought to give because God's given the greatest gift to us, but there are those that God uses that they just have this gift of just being able to always know what somebody needs and be able to meet that need, and they're willing to do it. Uh, not just out of their abundance, but also out of their own need as well, just because they have a heart for wanting to uh, meet the needs of other people. Then he talks about he that ruleth. Now, this isn't talking about uh, being somebody in charge or ruler, but talking about administration, someone who has the gift of administration, being able to oversee things and put things in its proper perspective. And then also he that showeth mercy. And we think about someone who shows mercy, I kind of think about a counselor, as someone who can listen to someone's life, listen to the, the things that they're going through, the hardships, the trials, the difficulties, not cast any judgment on them, just help them out. Uh, I know one of my first pastors uh, that we were under, he, he was like that. I mean, he would hear some of the strangest stories from people, and he just, he never batted an eye. I mean, he just embraced every single person with the love of Christ and even after hearing things uh, he just he would just love them he would not you know shun them or you know try to ignore them the next time he saw them he just he made you feel loved and welcomed and some people have that gift now we all are supposed to show mercy again God gives all of us gifts that he wants us to use for his glory Again, I, we're going to talk a little bit. I'll show you some difference between talents and gifts because you may have a talent uh, that you inherited from your parents. Uh, you know, some people inherit musical talents from their parents. Some people, they learn it. They, they learn it by going to school and stuff. Uh, some people have the talent of playing football, and that's just 
It's not a spiritual talent. Even though they may dance in the end zone and point up to heaven, I don't believe they're pointing to God uh, because they'll pound on their chest and stuff. But someone who gets saved, and there's been plenty of Christians who have been professional football players that have taken their faith on the field and in the locker room, and I commend them. But again, there are talents that people have that God wants to use, but God gives spiritual gifts when someone becomes born again. If you were to look at, in fact, go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, just as an introduction, looking at just the different spiritual gifts. Again, Romans 12 lists some of those. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12 will list some. Ephesians 4 will list, list some. Some of these spiritual gifts are no longer in use today. Uh, God's done away with them. Uh, speaking in tongues, the gift of healing. God used those to testify to his people, to the Israelites, to the Jews, that Christ had come. They had to, again, the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. All right, so some of these gifts are no longer in use today, but looking at them as well, 1 Corinthians 12, look at verse 11, 8 through 11, verses 8 through 11. For to one is given by the Spirit, speaking of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the one that gives these gifts and empowers God's people to be able to use them. For one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but all these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. I mean, just even stopping right there and thinking about the fact that the Holy Spirit of God is the one that imparts these spiritual gifts. A lot of people will find themselves not happy with what God's given them, and they will want what someone else has. And they, they disregard what God's given them and what God wants to use in their life and how God wants to use them. Again, God gives these gifts for his glory, not for our glory, but he wants to use us. He wants to use us in the ministry. Look at Ephesians chapter 4, even reminds us of this, the whole reason for spiritual gifts. It's not to lift us up. It's not to get us in the spotlight, but it is to obviously glorify God. It's to lift up Jesus Christ. It's to edify the body of Christ. We look at Ephesians 4, verse 11 and 12. He gave some apostles. Now, not just spiritual gifts of being able to uh, discern from discerning of the spirits and, and wisdom and knowledge, but he's given some actual positions in the church. Right? He gave some apostles, and some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. And the whole reason for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, the question for us tonight is, are you using your gifts and talents for the Lord? Are you using your gifts and talents for the Lord? Again, when you think about talents, in fact, uh, I've got a little diagram here that explains the difference between the talents and gifts because you think about a natural talent. I'm right, just giving you the difference real quick. The natural talents can be received from biological parents, all right? But the spiritual gifts are given by the Spirit of God. Again, someone that has a natural talent, you know. Uh, again, you know, some, some are very talented in, at music. And some get that from their parents, all right. Uh, some are talented uh, at carpentry. I mean, you think about Jesus Christ. He grew up in a carpenter's home, and he learned the trade of a carpenter. So there's different things that natural talents will give us, all right, that we can receive. But the spiritual gifts are given by the Holy Spirit, and you'll know the difference, for instance, uh, someone may be good at finance, at fina uh, what do I think of, uh, financial management. Someone may have learned the talent, if I can use that word, of financial management. And God gives them the gift of administration, being able to use their talent for God's good, being able to use it for the house of God, for the things of God. A natural talents are present from natural birth, but obviously spiritual gifts are present from conversion. The natural talents benefit the earthly realm, all right? But the spiritual gifts that God gives benefits the spiritual realm, all right? Again, 
and some, some of these talents and gifts can go hand in hand, like I said. But again, we got to make sure that we understand that God's not looking for the talented in order to add to his kingdom. He's looking for those that will surrender their life. And that's why he even tells us when you look back at Romans, he calls us to be living sacrifices. Say, Lord, here am I. What would you have me to do? I mean, you think about Paul. Think about Paul's life. Paul was zealous for the things of God, but he was going about it all the wrong way. Now, he had grown up uh, in, a, in a good home, a good religious home. Uh, he was taught under the best teachers. I mean, Gamaliel was his teacher. Uh, he was his, his master, so to speak. And I mean, he, he learned all the things of religion, and he was so zealous for that that he was willing to kill anybody that went against his God. Guess what? God used everything he had learned for his glory. God had given him a new heart at the day of his salvation, a heart that was zealous for the things of God, a, a man that was willing to set aside his position as a Pharisee, set aside everything that he had, he had gained, and counted it as dung, and used his life for the Lord. He became a living sacrifice, and the zeal that he had, God turned it and used it for the zeal of Jesus Christ. Again, when you think about just using our talents for the Lord, again, are you using your talents for the Lord? I'm not just asking this, those that are in the sanctuary, but those who are watching live stream. You know, what are we doing for the Lord? And again, we'll have our excuse, well, COVID-19 keeps us from doing so much. It shouldn't, really. We're still going about our life. We're still going about our business. We should still be going about the business that God has given us. Because there are people that still need the Lord. There are people that still need to hear that God loves them and God has a purpose for their life. Again, <clears throat> but as your gifts go for the house of God and for the family of God, again, that's why Paul, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, writes that we are members one of another. The very important reason, <clears throat> excuse me, why I believe in the local church and being part of a local church is because God wants to use your talents and the spiritual gifts that he's given you to help those in the church. God's, again, God's given us abilities to be able to help others. Again, the preaching of God's word, the teaching of God's word, children benefit from a Sunday school teacher who comes and teaches the word of God. And we ought to count it as a privilege to be able to do that. Now, I've known of some that have totally, totally dismissed that as anything important, so much as so uh, that they didn't show up for a Sunday morning when they were supposed to teach. They just disregarded it and didn't, didn't bother to call and say, hey, I won't be there. Can you have someone uh, take my class for me? Again, that's, that's the mindset. How do you view the things of God? Are they important or eh, it's just, you know, when it's convenient for me? Because God thought it was good enough to give us spiritual gifts to be used to edify the body of Christ. Again, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Again, when you think about the gifts that God gives, why does he give these gifts? Why does he even bother giving people spiritual gifts that may neglect it, may not use it? Well, because he knows at least there'll be some that will use it to glorify him. I want you to look at 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 11. The whole reason why we're even given spiritual gifts is to glorify God. And someone may, may wonder, well, what is my spiritual gift? The Lord Jesus Christ will show you what it is because he's the one when he ascended up on high and led captivity captive, gave gifts unto men. He gave you some spiritual gift to be used. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. Again, if any man minister, you're ministering to somebody. Somebody, well, I'm just, I'm not a good speaker. I'm kind of shy. Well, God's given everybody the ability. We've got to sometimes come out of our, come out of our shell, come out of our comfort zone. Again, uh, when, when I first got saved, 
uh, standing before people and speaking was the last thing on my mind. But God saw it fit to put me in a place like that. And I have to rely on him knowing that, you know what, he sure didn't choose me because I was a good orator or, you know, because I was, you know, I was somebody that, you know, when I, when I would speak, people would listen like E.F. Hutton, right? Nope. He just, he chooses who he wants to use in different places and he gives those spiritual gifts whether we think that we're capable of doing it or not because, again, it's all for his glory. He gets the glory when you submit your life to him and you are a living sacrifice and you let him use you the way that he chooses to. Again, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. That's the whole reason for church attendance. That's the whole reason for using your talents and your gifts for the Lord is because it glorifies God. God gets the glory when you help somebody else, when you teach somebody else the word of God, when you help someone else grow in the Lord, because again, everyone's growing at different rates. Everyone needs something. Again, I've, I've had, over the years, I've had different men work on my vehicles. I mean, uh, my home church, we had, we had a man that, that would work on our vehicles. I had men come and, and work on our house. And when I went in the ministry, God, God made sure there was someone there to, you know, be able to help with, because uh, I'm not a mechanic. That's just not a talent that I ever acquired. And uh, God just didn't give me a spiritual gift of, of all of a sudden knowing how to work on cars. But God's always made sure that those who had that talent and those that were surrendered to use that gift to the Lord, they were ready and they were willing. Uh, I just, I can always, I think of, of one man, uh, Ralph, right? I mean, Ralph was always looking. I mean, he was, he was the greeter at the door. I mean, this guy, I mean, he was always had a smile on his face. I mean, you come walking up to the door and I think you may be someone that, you know what, you just generally smile all the time. You're just always happy. God may want you at the door greeting people because people need to know they're coming into a friendly place. But this guy, I mean, if someone drove in, I mean, he was not only greeting them, but he was checking their car out. And if he heard anything wrong, man, he would say something. Oh, you know, let me look at that later. And that's using your gifts and your talents for the Lord and glorifying God with it. Now, the second reason that God gives spiritual gifts, obviously the first is to glorify himself. God gets glory when we use what he's given us to help people, but also to build up the body of Christ. And that's why it's so important. That's why the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, and so much more as you see the day approaching. A lot of people these days, I mean, they're offended at church attendance. They're, they're offended when a pastor even mentions it, but this is the whole reason for it, because others benefit from your attendance. Others benefit from the gifts that God's given you. And everyone gets help because, you know what, it's encouraging to see other believers. It's encouraging to, hey, you know what, everybody has an ear that eavesdrops. I mean, I know we, you know, you're not supposed to gossip, but everyone has an ear that eavesdrop. And when someone's talking, you know, we're, we're kind of, you know, what are they saying? But you know what, as a good Christian... If you have an ear that eavesdrop, you're listening for who needs help. Who can I encourage today? Who's down? Who needs encouragement? Who needs help in their life? And that brings glory to the Lord. Look at Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11 and 12. And these are reasons to think about church attendance. This is a reason to think, you know what? God still upholds the local church. Now, live streaming is good because obviously there for a while we weren't able to attend church but now that, you know, some churches are, are back operating and back open like we are, I mean, if someone can get to a good Bible-believing local church, they ought to be involved in local church. And I know there are times where, you know what, you're not able to get there and live streaming is good because you can still be a part of a church. But we ought to be active in God's church. Ephesians 4, verse 11 and 12. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Listen, <clears throat> again, as we think about it, Jesus Christ is the sole reason that we're even alive. 
He's the sole reason that we even have eternal life. And as the Bible does tell us, as he ascended up, he gave gifts unto men. Every person, the day that they get saved, the Holy Spirit of God imparts a spiritual gift to them. They might not know it right off the bat, like, oh, I'm saved. And, oh, I know what I'm supposed to do. Because you remember, actually, Paul, when he was on the road to Damascus, he said, Lord, what would you have me to do? And the Lord said, no, go to Damascus. It'll, it'll be shown to you what, what you need to do. I mean, he just surrendered his life. And, and as he kept serving the Lord, I mean, God would reveal to him the things that he wanted him to do. Obviously, God gave him the gift of being able to speak in tongues. He talks about that, you know, but he says, you know what, if you can speak in tongues, because a lot, I've met a lot of people, they want, they want these great gifts. They don't, you know, okay, giving, yeah, but no, I want the gift of prophecy. I want the gift of speaking in tongues. And again, a lot of different uh, groups will try to teach people how to speak in tongues so they know that they're saved. Listen, Paul said, you know what, if I speak in tongues but I don't have the love of Christ, what does that profit me? As he gives these spiritual gifts and as you develop your spiritual gift, you should find the love of Christ constraining you to use your gift for the glory of God and for the edification of the church. Again, to build up the body of Christ is the second reason. God wants you to encourage, to help, and strengthen somebody in the local church. But if you're not here, you can't do that. If you keep to yourself, you can't do that. And God wants us to because obviously Jesus said, if you've done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me. He takes it personally what we do and don't do. So I just want to, again, remind us and encourage us that, listen, God's given you a purpose, and that purpose is to glorify him in everything you do, and especially in the house of God among God's people. Now, again, as you use your talents and gifts, you will help others to grow spiritually. Now, the third reason that God gives these spiritual gifts is to develop unity in the body of Christ. It's to develop unity in the body of Christ. Look at Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 13. See, God just didn't give us these gifts just because he thought it would be great or because he can, but for purposes, to glorify him, to help edify the body of Christ, and to help bring unity into the body of Christ. Now, Ephesians 4, verse 13, the Bible says, Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ." Now, we need to come together to see things in like-minded ways, to move forward to achieve the goals that God wants us to. Think about what's the single goal that God has for the church, and that is to see converts saved, to see people saved, to see lives changed, to see uh, families strengthened, marriages strengthened back exactly how God wants them to be, to, to see individual lives growing rooted in Christ. Again, the number one goal is fulfilling, obviously, the Great Commission, helping people to come to know the Lord as their Savior, and then growing in the things of God to develop the unity. Because if everyone's doing what they want to do, then there's no unity. If everybody, is, 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 if everybody would be coveting someone else's gift, not using their gift, it hurts the church. It doesn't help the church. Again, I mean... Someone that's, that has a voice that can sing, that, you know what, they can carry a tune, they ought to use that voice for God. And when they sing, it should be pointed to the Lord. Now, obviously, the rest of us, we get to benefit from hearing the singing, and it points us to the Lord to help us to worship the Lord. That's the whole point of singing before the Lord, is to worship the Lord. So you think about this, also to develop maturity in the body of Christ. Look. If you're still in Ephesians 4, look at verses 14 and 15. Again, these gifts are to help to mature the body of Christ. In verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slate of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ." But God doesn't want us to be like children tossed to and fro, but to be mature. Knowing that, hey, you know what? I can do something 
to help my church family. I can do something to help the body of Christ. God's given, you know, a lot of people, when, when they, when they first, first become a member of a church, there are some that are looking for something to do. They want to be involved. And there are those that just kind of want to stay in the shadows and not, not be seen. But God wants all of us, again, to be active. It takes, it really does, it, it takes the entire church to make the ministry work. It takes the entire church to make the ministry work. One man cannot do it. Now, there's, there's been men who have tried to do it. Uh, they, they think, you know, er, that everything, you know, is, is what they want, and it's, it's failed. It takes an entire church. That's why God's given the talent. Again, someone that has the talent of carpentry, and they're a blessing to the church because, you know what, something that needs to be fixed or something that needs to be built, they've got the mindset. They can gather some men that maybe don't have that, that talent, but they can, be, they can be led in what to do by someone who has that capability. Again, it's all about building the body of Christ. It's about building the Lord's church and obviously glorifying him through it and helping others to grow in the Lord. I mean, what? listen, what better way to help win someone to the Lord than to be able to help them with whatever talent God's given you? I've known of some that have helped somebody on their car because their car broke down, and guess what? They were able to lead them to the Lord. Again, you that don't, obviously don't think, well, I can't work on someone's car, so you know what? I'm not even going to. No, you still try to help somebody. You understand what I'm saying. Sometimes God wants you to use your talent so it's an open door to be able to witness to that person. Uh, someone that has computer skills and someone that's, that's lost and knows that you have computer skills, and they, hey, can you help me? Absolutely, I'll help you. And in the process, you're able to talk to them. And God wants to. Again, God wants to use you, but we've got to be available and willing to be used of the Lord. And don't think that just Sunday and Wednesday is the only time you can use your spiritual talents. You can use them every single day. And we ought to be using them every single day. Why don't you look at verse 16 of Ephesians chapter 4. Another reason that God gives us these spiritual gifts is to grow the body of Christ. Verse 16, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Again, Paul kind of talks about he uses the analogy of the human body in, in one of his letters. He says, you know what, if everybody was the mouth, where would be the eye? Or, you know, where would be the ear? You know, if everybody had the same gifts, how would that edify the church? But again, God's gifted every single person with a special spiritual gift that he wants us to use. The talents that you've learned, the talents that you've inherited from your parents, talents that you have learned over the years, can be used for the glory of God. Again, someone playing football is not going to edify the church, but someone who gets saved and uses the same zeal they had for football, the same excitement, and they use it for the things of God, that's a good thing. Again, we're living in a day and age where, where church is an option for a lot of people, and it's because they have the wrong viewpoint of it. They have the wrong viewpoint of it. They're not viewing it as, you know what? This is God's ministry. What does God want me to do? How can I benefit the church of God? How can I bring glory to my Savior? And it's being a living sacrifice. Again, a living sacrifice is someone who lays themselves down on the altar and says, Lord, here am I, and you don't walk off the altar. You let God use you however he wants to. You let God glorify himself in your life. Now, again, healthy things grow. And church health brings church growth, and that's the way that God has it. And what a difference between spiritual gifts and natural talents. We've looked at that, but think about this. Atheists have natural talents, all right? Atheists have natural talents, but many who don't believe in God are talented and gifted people, but only Christians have spiritual gifts, and you have to think about that. You know what? God's given me a spiritual gift. Now, somebody, somebody may be talented at gossiping doesn't mean God's given them the gift of teaching, all right? 
Now, God can, hopefully, he'll turn that person's heart around, all right? But God's the one that gives those gifts. I want you to think about just the fact that God, someone, someone used this analogy, that God has a toolbox. God has a toolbox, and every tool that's in his toolbox is exactly what we need for our life. Exactly what we need. I want you to go back to Romans 12 and look at it again. Romans 12. Because if the world, if the world we live in can be zealous for their agendas, can be zealous for their beliefs, if they can go out into the streets, burn police cars, ransack businesses, and just destroy property for what they believe in, surely God's people can rise up and do and serve and love because of what they believe in. Listen, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now there may be some that say, well, pastor, uh, I hear what you're saying. I'm supposed to use my talents for the Lord, but my health keeps me from going to church. My health keeps me from doing uh, what I believe the Lord wants me to do. Listen, God always makes a way. I've used, I've used her as an illustration, and she's the sweetest illustration that I can think of, but, and her name was Winnie, and the first time I met her, I thought, man, this is a mean old woman. I mean, she just was mean. I mean, but as I got to know her, man, I realized, man, she's the sweetest woman ever. And she didn't have looks that would, you know, cause anyone to, you know, want to be her friend. She had had many strokes and she was hunched over, could barely see out of, out of one eye. But I tell you what, she had a heart of gold. She couldn't do much for the church physically, but man, spiritually she could. God gave her a heart for prayer. She prayed. She, I mean, she had a prayer list. And she made it her goal to make sure everybody got a birthday card on her birthday. Now, you want to talk about exhortation. You want to talk about giving. You want to talk about loving. But she couldn't physically do anything, yet what she could do, man, she went all out. I mean, there were times where we would go to her apartment, and I'd see by her chair, I mean, she'd have a stack of, of, of birthday cards that she was filling out, getting ready to pass those out on Sunday. And, and there were times where uh, she would have, I think it was uh, tracks that she had there. She was putting the church's name on. I mean, she, she found something to do. So age is not a factor. There really should be no excuse in the Christian's life of why they can't be a living sacrifice and allow God to use them and use the gift, the spiritual gift, and the talents that they have. But again, we have to be willing. We have to be the living sacrifice that says, here am I, Lord. What would you have me to do? Again, we're living in prime time right now. I know many people are focused on the election coming up and, and wondering, you know, who's going to be the next president? What's going to happen? It's all in God's hand. God knows exactly what's going to happen. All right? And people will get out there and, and, they, will, and, and they will lobby uh, for, for who they want to be president. I mean, they'll, they'll talk all about that. But listen, as God's people, we've got to be talking about the Lord. We've got to be lifting up Christ. We've got to be exhorting the church. People are hurting. I mean, we're, again, we're living in a time where a lot of people are hurting. A lot of people are hurting. They need the Lord. They need to know people love them. And God wants to use you specifically to be able to do that. Are we available? Are we allowing God to use us? Are, are we just comfortable where we're at? We're just fine where we're at. The Lord's coming back, so you know what? I'm just going to sit tight. I'm just going to coast because the Lord's going to come back soon. I'm just waiting for him. Yeah, he is. But remember, the Bible talks about when he comes back, will he find us faithful? Not faithfully waiting, but faithfully serving, faithfully using the spiritual gifts that he's given us 
for his kingdom, for the growth of the kingdom of God, for the edification of the body of Christ. Again, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, because obviously he's given us this life. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. I think many Christians need to renew their mind. They need to get a, a right focus again because their focus is off. They think, well, you know, Sunday is the time that, you know, I've got to work in my garden. I've got to, you know, do things around the house. No, Sunday's the time that you focus on the Lord. Sunday is that day that you give to the Lord for worship, for praising him, and for the edification of the body of Christ. Somebody needs you. Somebody needs you. Somebody needs you, but too many people don't care. Too many people are, are, are just coming in and going out. No one cares anymore. But somebody needs you. And you don't know who it is unless you're looking for them. Unless you're saying, Lord, show me who can I serve today. Lord, show me who can I show the love of Christ to. It's being a living sacrifice. It's, you know, Lord, my time is your time. My, my spiritual gifts are your spiritual gifts. You gave them to me. My talents, if I have any, you even allowed me to have them. Lord, what would you have me to do? Who would you have me to serve today? Who would you have me to love today? Who would you have me to show Christ to today? Again, he says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The perfect will of God is for God's people to be surrendered to his service, to be surrendered to his will. And his will is for us to be living sacrifices, for us to be helping the church of God to grow, helping people to grow and to come to know Christ as their Savior. Again, I wonder how many have been led to the Lord this year by God's people. How many have been invited to God's house by his people this year? Oh, but pastor, remember COVID-19. Doesn't matter. How many have we invited? How many have we shared Christ with? How many have we loved on with the love of Christ? Again, it doesn't matter what happens to us. It doesn't matter of what the world throws in our direction, God has still given us his perfect will, and that is to accomplish the Great Commission. That is to show people the love of Christ. Again, as he goes on to say, For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. And again, that's where many are at. They're thinking more highly of themselves instead of God. They're lifting themselves up instead of lifting God up. But to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. God's given all of us a measure of faith. But he wants all of us to be growing in that faith. He wants all of us, to, again, to be using our talents by faith. Lord, I'm not quite sure how to, how to do this. I, I, Lord, I, you know I'm not really good in this area. Look, it's trusting God. It's having confidence in, in God's ability. Again, his strength is made perfect in our weakness, but we still have to be willing. We still have to say, Lord, here am I. Lord, what would you have me to do? And I'm afraid that some people will walk away discrediting everything that God says about being a living sacrifice. There'll be some that will give themselves to the Lord and be, and, and be pricked in their hearts. You know what? God really does want me to do this. God's been burdening my heart to do this. I've been kind of been putting it aside and, and thinking, you know, he'll have someone else do it. Listen, if God brings something to your attention, he's bringing it to your attention because he wants you to do something about it. Whether he brings someone to your mind that he wants you to serve or to help, it's not just for you to pray that somebody else will meet their need. It's more often that he wants you to meet their need. He wants you to step out by faith and say, Lord, I will love on this person. I will serve this person. I will, whatever I need to do, I will help them. And, you'll, and just watch how God provides for you and helps you to be able to help that person. Again, it's all for the glory of God. Our focus needs to be, how can I glorify God today? 
How can I bring glory to God today? Who can I bring into the kingdom of God today? You remember, you go back, you look at the disciples. In the beginning, when Christ, was, uh, when Christ had, had, had made, made himself known, uh, you, had, uh, you had Andrew that went and got Peter and said, hey, we found, we found Christ. I mean, the disciples were going and bringing people to Christ. But unfortunately, later on, you see where they're kind of, they're trying to keep people from, oh, Lord, send them away. Trying to keep the kids from coming to Christ. They were, they were dumb fishermen, weren't they? I mean, even the, even the Pharisees, even the religious rulers said, you know, these are ignorant men. But they took knowledge that they had been with Christ. Do people see that we've been with Christ? Does Christ bear out in our life? Because you know what? Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto myself. Christ will bring people into our lives to love and to serve. But I believe some of the greatest people that need to be served are in the house of God. They're in the house of God. I was reading again today, I believe it was in the, in, uh, in the early church, in the book of Acts. And the Bible talked about, again, we all ought to be praying, but there are some that, that God's really given, I believe, the gift of powerful prayer. And I'm, what I mean by that, we all pray and we can have power in our prayer, but there are those that God has given just the ability to be able to pray and to pray specifically for people that God brings to their minds. And they just, when they pray, and it really moves in the hearts of people. And as the early church prayed and was given to the word of God, God added to the church daily such as should be saved. He didn't add to the church just those that got saved but those that should be saved, those that would come and, and hear the word of God, but they would also see the love of Christ through God's people and how God's people got along. I mean, again, you put, you put different people in a, different room, in, in a room together, people with different backgrounds, different likes, different uh, nationalities, all that stuff. How in the world can you get people of so different Culture, cultures, different backgrounds. Because remember, on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 got saved. They all heard God in their own language. And the book of Acts gives us the different languages, different nations were represented there. How in the world can you bring all those people together and they get along? The love of Christ. And some people need to see that. Some people need to come into a loving environment where God's people get along, there is unity, so they see, you know what? All lives really do matter. These people really care about each other and about other people outside of these four walls. Again, using your spiritual gifts for the glory of God. He's given them for a purpose and a reason, to glorify him, to edify the body of Christ, to grow the body of Christ, and obviously to help win people to Christ as well. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we do thank you for the spiritual gifts that you've given. Lord, I think sometimes we, uh, we neglect it. Maybe sometimes it's not, someone's not helped to be able to find out what their spiritual gift is. They're not told to seek God for that spiritual gift that he's already given you. Uh, sometimes, Lord, we don't allow people to serve in the church. Sometimes people don't want to serve. Well, Lord, I pray that you would work in our hearts to help us, Lord, to be those living sacrifices that not only will say, here am I, Lord, but we will do what you've given us to do. That, we, Father, we will seek opportunity to serve uh, in our churches, among our people. We'll seek opportunities to serve outside the church, to serve people, to show people the love of Christ. Father, I ask that you would continue to speak to our hearts. I pray, Father, you'd continue to guide us. According to your will, you do have a perfect will for each of us. Uh, Lord, it's not just playing church. It's not just going through the motion of life. But it's you have a purpose, a single purpose, and that is to draw men and women and children to Jesus Christ. And, Father, what, what greater way to be able to do that than through surrendered people of God, through surrendered Christians? Father, I ask that you would continue to work in our hearts. Continue, Lord, to help us to bring glory to you. 
Father, I ask that you would give safety as your people go their separate ways. As always, Lord, uh, go before us. We know, Father, that we're on the winning side. The devil always resists. He always wants to fight, always wants to snatch away the truth that's been sown in our hearts. And I pray, Father, that you would put a hedge of protection around that seed uh, that's been sown in our hearts. Help us, Lord, to, to have the mindset, the steadfastness, uh, to keep running the race that you have placed us in, keeping our eyes on the author and finisher of our faith. Father, we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.